hard as rock, lasts forever. <coughs> wow, the aftertaste hits the back of your throat very hard indeed. Why would you do that? It's just grim. <sighs> Salve, I'm Dan Snow, and I've just had a busy day civilizing the natives here in the Roman province of Britannia. And today I'm gonna to be eating a typical meal provided to a Roman officer in that army of occupation. Let's get into the eating position. The ancient Romans originally came from Rome, but they ruled over a vast empire that stretched way beyond that city or even the confines of Italy. The Roman Empire covered land from the Middle East, North Africa, all around the Mediterranean into North and West Europe and even parts of Great Britain from 43 AD to around 410. And as they won more battles and conquered more lands, the empire got bigger. Now, counting auxiliary soldiers, there could have been around a million men in the Roman army. The life of a Roman soldier was tough. They had to endure hostile natives who were defending their homelands from invasion or occupation. They had to undertake grueling marches across rough and dangerous terrain. They had to deal with severe weather, lack of food, arduous battles. To survive all that, the Romans needed a hearty diet. A lot of what we know about that Roman diet comes from something called the Codex Theodosianus, a compilation of Roman laws published in 438. It stated that during expeditions, a Roman soldier should be supplied with bucalatum ac panem vinum, coque atque atticum, sed et laridum carnem verbecianum, or hardtack and bread, wine too and vinegar, but also bacon and mutton. So today I'm eating hardtack biscuits, a refreshing drink of posca, wild boar, some mashed parsnip, bacon, and a delicious slice of cheese. Hardtack biscuits was the staple, a simple biscuit that was very, very hard. It's made from flour, salt, and water. Hard as rock, lasts forever. Baked twice at very low temperatures. <laughs> The great thing about this is you can cook a lot of this in your main base and then send it out with the army if it goes on a long campaign. And it'll last for months, even years. If you send out bread, it'll go stale and mouldy. If you send out flour, it'll spoil, especially in this damp British climate. So hard tack, easy carbohydrates. This tastes like you're eating a bit of stone. And so one of the great pastimes of the Roman army was find something to dip this in, whether it's a drink or some stew, anything to make this staple a little bit more exciting. The Latin name for this was bucalatum, biscuit. And Roman soldiers became so synonymous with this, they became known as bucalari, which means biscuit eaters. The Romans are famous for drinking wine, but in Britain, soldiers probably would have had something called posca, this delicious drink here, let's test it out. <laughs> that, if anything, has made the biscuit even less edible. Posca is made by mixing wine with vinegar, with water, and with honey. Why would you do that? It's just grim. Posca gets a lot of mentions in the Roman sources. Pliny the Elder talks about it. A playwright called Plautus mentions it a few times. And also, it's clear that drinking posca, like sharing a posca with someone, was a way that emperors, generals, senior commanders could show that they had the common touch. They weren't scared to rub shoulders with the ordinary men serving in the front line. One account says that the Emperor Hadrian actually led a soldier's life and cheerfully ate out of doors such camp fare as bacon, cheese, and vinegar. I bet he had proper rations when he got home that night. The vinegar in the water, apparently, well, its sharpness would have helped disguise the taste of bad water. The acidity would have helped to kill bacteria, apparently. And according to a recent study, vinegar makes you feel more full. Hunger would have been a common complaint of Roman soldiers serving on campaign. So vinegar makes them feel a bit more full. No wonder they add it to their wine. Wow, the aftertaste hits the back of your throat very hard indeed. Posca even gets mentioned in the Bible during one of the most famous stories of all time, when Jesus is up there on the cross. Matthew writes in his account of that terrible day. Immediately, one of them ran, and taking a sponge, he filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave him a drink. Oh. 
Roman soldiers would have eaten meat whenever they get their hands on it. And we've got good evidence of that from the Vindolanda tablets, these wonderful written sources found at a fort on Hadrian's Wall in northern Britain. They talk about the food eaten by the army stationed up there, particularly what the commanding officer would have eaten, a guy like me. And the answer is a lot of venison and wild boar. Let's check this out. Not too bad. Like pork, but you know, a bit more gamey. Now we know from archaeology carried out at Roman military sites right across Northern Europe that plenty of bones have been found. And from that analysis, we can tell the Romans ate ox, sheep, goat, pig, deer, boar, and hare in most places. And they get their hands on. They've even found evidence that they were eating elk, wolf, fox, badger, beaver, bears, voles, ibexes, and otters. What otter tastes like? While officers like me were eating delicious treats like wild boar and the other meats they get their hands on, typical Roman soldiers probably had to make do with a lot of these vegetables. I like mushy vegetables, but if I was going to go and do a shift standing on Hadrian's wall in a snowstorm, having spears thrown at me, I might want something a little bit more substantial in my stomach. I do like parsnip, to be fair, and I'm not alone. The Roman Emperor Tiberius was so fond of parsnips, he imported them all the way from Germany across the Alps into Rome. And he even accepted parsnips as tribute payments instead of gold from Germanic tribes. Now, according to the author Pliny, parsnips were also useful in warding off snakes and as an aphrodisiac. I wouldn't go that far, I'm not really feeling it, but it's delicious. And it comes from a Roman recipe book put together in the 5th century. It's called the Apicius. And this recipe tells us to mash the parsnips, then add cumin, rue, liquamen, passum, oil, coriander leaves, and leeks. Serve. Goes well with salt pork. I don't have any salt pork with me today, but I have the next best thing, which is, of course, bacon, which, let's be honest, goes well with anything. It was very accessible to Roman soldiers, bacon, because it was cured with salt, and therefore it would keep well, and you could take it on campaign, and it wouldn't spoil. Delicious. Salt was so valuable to Roman soldiers because it allowed them to preserve their food. And they were sometimes paid in salt instead of money. Now, that monthly allowance became known as a salarium, sal being the Latin word for salt. And that's where we get the modern word salary. Ah, cheese. Who doesn't have a good bit of cheese? Well, the Romans certainly did. It's one of the things they introduced to Britain alongside the mixed blessings of central government, gladiatorial combat, underfloor heating, taxation, sewers. But the cheese, we can all agree, was a benefit to Britain. And Roman legionaries brought those cheese-making skills to this occupied territory. I think we can forgive them a lot in return for the cheese. Now, the Romans traded different kinds of cheeses all over their empire. We even know the name of the first identifiable cheese brand. It was called La Luna, the moon. So it shows that the association between the moon and cheese goes all the way back to the Roman Empire. And it's not surprising they were so familiar with cheese because Roman soldiers would largely have been raised in rural communities on farms. They knew the process of cheese making very well. So wherever they ended up, they could settle down and start making some local cheese. The Romans were just really good at making cheese. Pliny says in a rather arrogant way, it is a remarkable circumstance that the barbarous nations which subsist on milk for so long have been for so many ages either ignorant of the merits of cheese or have totally disregarded them. Like everything the Roman army did, it was obsessed with victory, with winning, and that really dictated how it dealt with its food. All this food is easy to store, it's pretty easy to carry with you, and it doesn't spoil. It gave the army a huge advantage. They could campaign a long way from their base for long periods of time, while the other side would run out of food and have to disperse and go and find it. That meant the Roman army would be victorious across huge swathes of North Africa, the Middle East, and Europe. They could build villas like this one reconstructed here at Butser Ancient Farm in Britain. Thanks for joining me, folks. If you've enjoyed watching, please click on any of the videos on this screen for more delicious content.